All right, guys, so this is another Patreon request, and this one comes from my good friend Chris, a.k.a. the Mount Vernon Kid. And uh, as always, if you guys would like to have a Patreon request done, just hit the link below, head on over to my Patreon, where you guys can start sending me requests for videos to do here on Patreon. But other than that, um, hope you all enjoyed this, and let's get started. So this was a part of another group of requests that Chris asked me to do that I uh, accidentally missed, so shame on me. And basically he asks, like, why does DC, uh, why does DC care more about legacies than Marvel does? Or rather, um, to put it more like, why, um, why do people accept legacy characters in DC more than Marvel? There's the better answer. So it's basically like, you know how we, we have, like, in DC Comics, we have characters who take on the mantle of someone else, and this usually, and sometimes, like, four out of five times, those characters are more loved in that role than the original person. Perfect example, Wally West as, as The Flash. That was every, that was The Flash, and he's going to be in here. A lot of people loves, uh, loved um, Barbara more as the Oracle than Batgirl, and preferred to see, like, Cassandra Cain, like yours truly, or Stephanie Brown in that role, you know. And let's not forget, like, Robin is a legacy role. Let's be real here, Robin's a re legacy role, and, you know, Renee Montoya is the question. But over on Marvel's side, you barely see the role stick, because not, here's, here's the thing, is that characters in the DC universe feel like they grow up more. Like, they really do feel like um, those characters really, like, grow up and they take on new identities, or they put polish on a previous identity by someone else. Um, whereas Marvel, Marvel really just kind of puts the legacy characters um, and gives the titles to someone else for a time being after that character dies. Like, that's kind of how it is. Not to say Mar DC doesn't do that, it's just that Marvel is way more notorious for doing um, legacy roles uh, as more of, like, here, this character is now that character now. Um, that's how it's kind of been. And really, we all know with, DC, with comic books in general is death is really more like power napping in comics. It's... It's really more about, like, taking a big, long sleep than anything else. Like, that's how it kind of is. Um, but whereas DC, you see it all the time. Like, you see in a lot of um, titles, those characters inherit those roles, and they become more, pow uh, they become more popular and more well-known than the previous um, owner. Um, and there are tons of characters you may not even realize did they did have roles. Like, they did ha take on that role from someone else. Perfect example. A lot of people know that, yes, Jaime Reyes is the OG, is like the third Blue Beetle, and a lot of people do know Ted Kord. But a lot of people don't remember Dan Abnett, the very first uh, Blue Beetle. Like, a lot of people forget that. It's the same thing with, like, a lot of people forget Alan Scott, is, you know, was the first Green Lantern, or Jay Garrick was the first Green Lantern. We didn't realize that until we brought up the Justice Society, and that's become more popular. Um, now, again, like I, ha like I said earlier, one of the things you have to look at in this, in this whole thing is that um, DC does, like I said with the Marvel characters, DC is not, gui is not uh, guilty of doing the whole gimmick of, well, this character is now that character now. Um, we saw it recently with um, John Kent being Superman for a hot minute. And technically speaking, he is still Superman. Like, they still, uh, he is still referred to as super, uh, Superman. And even Clark was like, why can't there be uh, two Supermen? And Bruce did this too. When Dick came, uh, you know, when he came back and Dick was Batman, he was like, keep being Batman, okay? I'm going to go make Batman. I'm going to make a bunch of Batman in Batman Incorporated. So that's the thing is that it's the it seems like DC is always been built on legacy, whereas Marvel has been more built on the characters you know. That's how I really kind of look at it. Is that DC care uh, DC comics have always felt like they've been legacy. Like they've always felt like the titles like either change or they get given to someone else. I can point to you that there are several characters in DC Comics that you weren't aware that that was part of a line. 
Like, that is part of a legacy line. Like, again, Adam Smasher, that's uh, that's an important one. Um, he's That's the second character to become Adam Smasher. Um, the Justice Society does it all the time. Like, um, uh, what's his name? Uh, the owner of the, uh, of, uh, the kid, uh, Jack, uh, like, uh, it was Jackson something and his gin, which was called, uh, Light the Lightning. So that was, so that was an inheritance too. Crimson Avenger became, uh, like, the first Crimson Avenger was this uh, character who, and it's also funny because a lot of characters, when they take on a, her inherit a role, sometimes they're totally different characters. Like, again, the Crimson Avenger is, um, Crimson Avenger was a totally different character, like, in the 40s, and then a woman, a, uh, this young woman found his guns and became the second Crimson Avenger, so it can be, like, totally different characters from other roles, and need I remind you, again, the roles of Batgirl and Robin have always been legacy roles, like, <laughs> need we, and also, characters have taken on different, um, identities, and yes, while Tim Drake has gone back to being Robin, he was for a hot minute um, Red Robin, and for some reason he went by the name Drake, and <sighs> you can call me on my bad phone late night when you need my... I'll stop. <laughs> but that's how it's always been kind of been. Now, Marvel has done this a few times where characters will take on the role of another character, and they'll it'll stick with them. And sometimes they'll go back to it and, and be remembered for it. Like, currently right now, Sam Wilson, was uh, he was Captain America, then he became Falcon again, and now he's back to being Captain America. Because, well, for that, it's more of, like, to keep in touch with the movies, let's be real. Like, that's more in touch with, um... Like, we're gonna do this for more of the movie's sake than anything else. <laughs> we're just kind of keeping in touch with the movie. Um, but I will say that you do see this a few small times where um, it's actually more like villain. It actually is kind of, now that I think about it, villains kind of take on the roles of characters and they stick with it. Like, um, the Cra I can go on and on about the Craven fa the Cravenoff family and how much they've kind of uh, taken on those roles um, of Craven the Hunter so many times. And other times, like, there are characters who inherit these roles and become synonymous with their own identity, with this identity. Like Kate Bishop, she became known as Hawkeye for a hot minute, and then when Clint came back, she kept the role, uh, she kept the title of Hawkeye. That's another legacy character that got, uh, who got to keep her title. Um, and you have, well, Kate's usually the prime, a really good example. Whereas other characters, they just kind of, when the other person came back, nine times out of ten in Marvel, they'll usually just jump back to, uh, they'll just turn into something else. Like, Iron, uh, like, um, Riri was trying to make herself into her own version of Iron Man, then became Ironheart. Um, Amadeus Cho was the Hulk for a hot minute, and now he's Brawn. Then you have, of course, Jane Foster, who was Thor, and then became uh, a Valkyrie. So... There's all, and currently, again, I'm, although I haven't been keeping up with Al Ewing's Venom, um, Dylan took on her his father's role as becoming Venom. So there is another major aspect right there. Um, but it always feels like legacy doesn't really matter to Marvel. Like, it's more about the characters and the roles they have. Whereas DC, they're like, yeah, we want to make it feel like these characters grow and change. Because, like, the Titans are a perfect example of characters that are growing and changing. Um, and you, and like I said, the, the one character that I always point to of a, a legacy character, a legacy title that was taken on by someone else and became more popular than the first guy was, of course, Wally West. Hell, it was like, there, <laughs> yeah, Wally West was so popular as the Flash, fucking... Um, let's not forget that, like, there was a rage for, for Wally West to come back into DC continuity and be put back in there. It wasn't good for him for a bit, looking at you, Heroes in Crisis, 
But it eventually evened itself out, and now Wally West is actually being treated with respect again. So that's nice. <laughs> anyway, so there you go, guys. That is pretty much uh, my video on on this. Um, and yeah, you guys tell me in the comments below, what do you guys think on Legacy in comic books? Um, just comment below, let me know. And once again, I'd like to thank Chris for his continued patronage, as well as um, this video. And like I said earlier, if you'd like to have a Patreon request, just hit the link below, head on over to my Patreon, where you guys can uh, hit the fourth tier and start sending me requests for videos to do here on YouTube. But other than that, I'm Mr. Multiverse. I'll see you next time in the Multiverse.